Hello and welcome to this anti-social media experiment called Feherty, up close from a distance. My guest today is up and coming young PGA Tour star, Max Homa. Max, how are you doing? Thanks for having me. This is a this is a real honor. Big fan of yours. Now, uh, full disclosure here, I should really uh, go from the top here with I am so computer illiterate. I don't know where this is going to show. I don't know how this is going to look. Yeah, but we're going to take a shot at it. I'm, I'm interested in, in how you're dealing with uh, this really strange situation. We're going to try and have fun here today, obviously, but it's a fairly serious thing that's going on here, to say the least. How are you managing the social distancing? Yeah, uh, doing great. Uh, just been mostly staying inside. Uh, went and hit balls yesterday from a very safe distance from everyone, about 30 yards. So uh, <laughs> trying to keep my sanity. Uh, I think like everybody, I'm going through waves of, uh, I can't believe this is actually happening. And uh, the more positive we're going to get through it, and it's all going to be good once we come out the other side. But it's definitely tough. Uh, I miss I miss playing golf with my buddies, uh, miss competing. But I mean, everyone's going through it, so uh, just trying to enjoy this time I have with my family, I guess, and uh, and just wait till we get the okay to go start traveling around the country again. Uh, what what lengths are you going to? My my wife takes my temperature every 15 minutes. It seems. Um, I mean, do you have to sanitize your balls before you hit them? <laughs> I might need to start doing that. If it gets any worse, I might have to go to that. I need like a Bryson Spritz uh, spray bottle guy to spray it with sanitizer. So. Um, yeah, I've, I've gone through lengths. I've been just trying to really isolate myself from people, obviously not touching anybody with my hands or anything like that. Uh, just trying to listen and, and, uh, keep up with what the CDC has been saying. Um, you know, it's been difficult as far as not be able to leave the house, but, um, fortunately, uh, we had gotten some provisions here and there. So we've been watching a lot of TV, uh, taking my dog on a lot of walks, uh, not let, let, letting anybody pet her. So everybody's been keeping that six foot uh, distance that they suggest. What, what kind of a dog have you got? A big old chunky yellow lab. So oh, really? she, she loves this more than anybody. She wishes every every month could be a, a quarantine month. Yeah, my beagle, uh, she's exactly the same. And I'm pretty sure you can strengthen your immune system by kissing your dog on the nose. Good, good. I think I have a very strong immune system then. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, tell me, uh, now, uh, at high school, I'm always interested in, in what kind of a pupil, you know, my, my subjects were. You, you end up being a professional golfer. I, I didn't graduate high school, and uh, it, it worked out for me. Um, what, what sort of a student were you? Um, I guess I was the type of student where if you were teaching me something I had a big interest in, I, I did well in it. And if I couldn't see an application in my life to that subject, I, I was not a good student. So unfortunately, really? I guess that would make me uh, a kind of a punk kid in high school as far as uh, thinking I knew more than than the teachers, which is obviously wildly inappropriate. <laughs> that That is such a common denominator, though, with, with my guests, especially the athletes. Uh, the, if something interested them at school, uh, there were, I mean, music and English were the only two things that I was interested in and the only two things that I was halfway good at. You know, so, I mean, I think it has something to do with the attention deficit side yeah. of it. Uh, you know, if it, if it interests you, you can pay attention. If it doesn't, you know, you, you might as well, you know, blow it out of your ass. <clears throat> yeah, kind of like, I mean, it's like a TV show. Some TV shows start off slow. Some people get, you know, they're they're over it. And if it starts out hot, you're locked in. It's, I mean, it would be the same thing with any, obviously, like you do a lot of these uh, interviews. If the interview falls flat early, people like me would probably just doze off. Uh, some people might be able to hang in there, but that's what makes you so good at it is it usually, you know, is, is good from beginning to end. But that's, that's unfortunate that so many of us just have such a, a six second time, time span of focus these days. Yeah. Yeah. That's the truth. Well, do your best to stay, uh, uh stay conscious. <laughs> ask you when you got to college, you, you majored in consumer behavior. What the hell is that? You can probably tell me as much about it as I know. Consumer it's like a sociology major. <laughs> Oh, right. Sociology. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what that means. Either. Yeah, I kind of don't either. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you had a, a, a great amateur career uh, and uh, ended up playing in the Walker Cup. You turned pro just after playing in the Walker Cup. Did, did the U.S. win that Walker Cup or? Yeah, we won. We won quite handily. It was really fun. And who was on that team? Uh, Justin Thomas, Patrick Rogers, uh, Michael Kim, Michael Weaver, Bobby Wyatt, Corey Witsett, uh, Nathan Smith. Uh, who am I missing? Jordan Ebrugge and 
Todd. Oh my gosh, what's his last name? We had an unbelievable team. We had we had the that was the year we had to have two mid ams. Our two mid ams were amazing. Nathan will end up being a a Walker Cup captain, I would assume, at some point. Yeah. Um, and uh, obviously having Justin Thomas on the team is always pretty helpful. <laughs> uh, that'll help, that'll yeah. help uh, every time. Now, um, you, you, you turned pro in 2013 right after the Walker Cup, and then you were kind of on, you had a year on, a year off, a year on, a year off, until you know 2019, you really uh, kind of cemented your presence there with a win at, at, at Quail Hollow. Um, how was it uh, during that period? You know, when when you weren't sure, you had one foot on the web.com and, and one foot on the PGA Tour. Yeah, it's tough. Um, you know, obviously the PGA Tour is filled with a ton of phenomenal talents and and great golfers. Uh, when you when I left college, I felt like I I would be up kind of at least consistently keeping my card. Obviously, I knew it was difficult, but uh, you kind of lose your identity a bit when you're bouncing back and forth. You, I felt personally like I was a when I was on the web.com tour, I was kind of a a bigger fish in a small pond. And when I got up to the PJ tour, I felt like I was a tadpole in the, uh, in the ocean. So it was not a very fun feeling. Um, I kind of knew that my golf game, if I could just get my mind wrapped around that, I was pretty good at it. Uh, my golf game would follow suit. Uh, so it was nice last year to finally kind of rattle off some good finishes and then obviously win to start to feel like I, I wasn't crazy after all. Uh, so yeah, it's been a, it's been a definitely a nice a very welcome change of pace the last two years. Finally, believing that um, I'm where I'm supposed to be and not bouncing back and forth. I'm sure my my family is also quite a bit less stressed out <laughs> about the end of each year. Yeah, that, that's always, uh, it's always a nice feeling being able to do that. Um, tell me a little bit about your uh, your social uh, networking, you know, the Twitter and, and the podcast with Shane Bacon. I mean, you're immensely popular when it comes to that. Yeah, uh, this is a good time for it, I guess, now that everyone's stuck inside. Um, yeah, uh, I guess, uh, you know, the whole Twitter thing has always been fun for me. I really like interacting with people. I like seeing what people are doing. Um, you know, everyone likes to, especially at times like this, uh, like we were talking before, we need a little levity. We need some laughs. I know it's a serious situation, but we're still allowed to laugh. We're still allowed to try to uh, kind of come uh, overcome all the, the mental deficits that this this uh situation has kind of put us in um and then yeah so shane bacon and i started a podcast called get a grip uh i think we just released our ninth episode so um that's been fun it's a it's kind of a cool hobby to do we're, we're not stepping on anybody like your toes uh we know we know where we where we land in the uh in the media world but uh he's great uh he's obviously a pro uh he makes it very easy for me and lets me just kind of talk and and uh do my thing while he does all the important stuff so uh it's been fun i actually really enjoy it and uh it's been nice to see the people uh you know other people kind of gravitate towards it and enjoy it as well you're a California kid, uh, Los Angeles uh, Lakers and Dodgers fan for life, I guess. Yeah, uh, for life. Yeah, the, the, the Dodgers and the Astros in the World Series. <laughs> I mean, now, what do you think? I mean, I'm disgusted. <laughs> it's it's really messed me up. I, I mean, Clayton Kershaw is my favorite baseball player of all time. And after that World Series, I really was upset for him. And I, I was I was kind of... Uh, down in the dumps just about his legacy and that people are going to remember him as someone who just couldn't get it done in the in the World Series. And now I look back and when you look at all the stats, he actually had an incredible playoff run and we will never get to know what he could have done if they wouldn't have, uh, you know, quote unquote, cheated. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I uh, you know come from Northern Ireland. Obviously, I, I don't have a baseball background, and I don't <laughs> really understand the rules. I think you you've got to grow up with the sport to understand it completely. But I mean, people, I, I ask people about this, and they say that it's kind of a common thing in in baseball. You know, stealing signs, and and you know, it's something that's been going on for a long time. Yeah, it it is. Except usually you don't uh, hire the people uh, who are uh, giving a live feed to then send it down to your locker room. Um, you know, I think uh, what a lot of people have kind of come to grips with is, uh, you know, the sign stealing. If you're on second base, for instance, and you see the sign and you go back and tell your teammate, that's just part of the game. But when you are uh, when you have you know electronics involved i think that's when it becomes a bit more when you put a buzzer under your shirt so that somebody can zap you when the certain pitch is coming i feel like that's that's a little little more cheating than uh yes. than not so i get the gamesmanship of, of other ways of the of the game i know that there's unwritten rules and um and all that but but th in this instance it definitely feels 
a lot. It would be like if I was taking a test in high school in a class that we would both struggle in. And uh, I had a something on my on me where my friend could buzz me once for to answer A, two for B, three for C, and four for D. That would that, I think I would get expelled from school for that. So I, I would. Yeah, though. Yeah, it is a good idea. Listen, I got a good idea, but <laughs> I was probably paying more attention to that in school than I was actually the class. So maybe that's why I didn't do so great. Well, um, you, you're. Uh... You become famous for giving people a hard time about their swings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a very entertaining uh, segment that you do. Uh, okay. You had an entertaining swing yourself. It was a pretty oh. spectacular shank. Yeah, that was uh, that was not the best timing. See, that's the issue I've realized with this whole swing roast thing is uh, at some point I am going to get myself on TV and it's not going to be very good. And I am very exposed to uh, <laughs> to the powers that be. Uh, on uh, social media, so that was unfortunate. <laughs> so yeah, you, you're constantly giving these poor schmoes, uh, you know, a hard time about their swing. Uh, we're we're going to show you my swing from the '94 Open Championship at Turnberry here, and uh, I want you to critique that for me. And and please be gentle. Yeah, um, the golf swing's obviously pretty good. Uh, you you are, I think we have the same number of wins, so uh, I can't really go too much on the technique. Uh, I will say that it was a little difficult to see considering I think this is about 30 years before high definition uh, <laughs> cameras. Um, also, uh, I was wondering if Titleist paid you less because your hair and that visor covered about half of the logo. <laughs> I didn't know if that if that, that, that big poofy hair uh, oh, yeah. had anything to do with your, uh, your uh, diminished contract. <laughs> those, those were the 90s. It wasn't <laughs> a haircut, it was my head blowing bubbles. <laughs> That's yeah. very fair. Yeah. Okay, now we got uh, a little thing on, on my uh, TV show we do is rapid fire. So uh, I'm, I'm going to test you out on this one. Uh, sunglasses on the golf course, yes or no? No. Bigger idiot, mashed potatoes guy or get in the hole guy? Uh, get in the hole guy when it's on the tee on a, on a par five. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. What is the best dog breed? Uh, Labrador. Okay. Um, is a single man who owns cats able to be trusted? Uh, absolutely not. Yeah, got you on that one too. Riviera or Bel Air? Riviera. What's the biggest misconception about Californians? Is everyone cool or is everyone stoned? Um, both. <laughs> That's also the correct answer. Yeah. How many titles is LeBron going to win with LA? Uh, hopefully two more. Two more. I'll uh, take one, man. <laughs> okay. Yeah. How many titles is LeBron? Uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, well, you can answer Hopefully that one. two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one word to describe the Houston Astros. Uh, pathetic. Okay. <laughs> what color underwear do you have on? Uh, black. Okay. Uh, and are you wearing pants? Uh, do shorts count? <laughs> no. No, they do right. not. Well, thank you for joining me today. That 1970s porno mustache. <laughs> I'll try. I'll keep rocking <laughs> it for a little while. <laughs> All right, buddy. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks. See ya. Yeah.